What's going on, y'all? So listen. What's going on, y'all? So who? Let me tell y'all something. We are here for a new episode of Black Ink Crew, Chicago. This is season five, episode six, and it's just called Four. Okay. Um, I knew the episode was gonna be something when. Literally, right before the episode began, they put out a warning about, you know, this um, episode will be dealing with um, mental health issues, depression, suicidal thoughts, and things of that such. And, you know, just giving you a warning just in case you may be triggered by some things. And I was like, I've never seen that on a VH1 show. Okay. And I said, oh, so they really finna get deep tonight. All right. And, um, we've seen the previews. I didn't know exactly how they was going to approach this. I just didn't want them to get on here and to do some fake stuff or whatever. But let me just put this out here right here from the forefront. The shit was good. The shit was good. And I'm saying good in a way that, in a sense that, this is probably one of the sec- the realest episode outside of when Don was going through the stuff that he was going through with his sister and losing her to suicide and everything. This was one of the realest episodes throughout the whole thing. I don't even really care about the pool party stuff, but, you know, outside of that, everything else that happened, it was a much needed thing that needed to happen. And when I say much needed, I'm speaking on, you know, putting it out there because we have this stigma, especially in the African-American community where um, it's taboo still for some reason, you know, to talk about going and see therapists and, you know, talking about mental health illnesses and, you know, saying that, oh, all you need to do is pray and, and, and go to church and seek God and all that stuff. Yes, you do have to do that, but you also have to go seek other um, help as well. And you also have to have people around you who's in your corner, who's trying to be there for you as well. I was just sitting here like, this episode was good as fuck. I'm sitting here like, girl, let me, I had to gather myself before I got on this camera because, baby, it had me in here like, when Ryan and Ford, we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. But let's just go from the beginning, okay? Well done. Out of all the shit that I talked about this whole show um, and how it has, you know, gone down in value to me. This was one of the better episodes. I will say you, 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 you did that. Y'all did that. So, you know, they're still in Vegas and Charmaine want to throw a little party. She's over there. You know, we got her with the comedy talking about the diva cup to Bella and how that shit worked. Thank you for explaining that because I never understood how it worked. Do I want to do it? Hell no. Okay. Uh uh-uh. When she was describing how you got to put it all the way up there, then you got to squat, and then you got to push it out like you cr- a girl. No, I ain't got time for all that. A, a, a pad to do, bitch. Um, whatever. Um, moving on from that, you know they want to throw a party. Um, they're gonna throw this party, bring in some of the artists that they met, some of the clients that they met, some of the friends that they met, and just have a good time or whatever. And so you know they throwing the shit and um. Everybody's having a good time. Uh, you know, Jen, she had left. Van was in his feelings or whatever because Jen left. He wasn't here for what happened the night before, how he messed up. And Jen had went to a hotel. And, you know, basically the party was going on. Charmaine gives this little toast to Ryan. And, you know, he having troubles with his voice or whatever. Um, Jen do pop up. Okay, Jen pop up and Jen have a conversation with Van. She was like, bitch, I know they having a party. You ain't finna run me off. I'm not finna be no woman scorn and all this stuff. But you are a woman scorn and you can't put yourself in that position because once again, like I said, you stayed in that position, okay? You allowed this shit to happen to you. So, um, to, I not allowed it to happen, but to allow it to continue to happen, I should say. Rephrase my words. Um, I... Jen having that conversation, trying to see what's going on and what you got to say and all this stuff. And then Van, you know, I do want to marry you, but I didn't want to do it that way. And I'm tired of being hurt. I'm tired of this and I'm tired of that. And whoop de I really didn't care for the conversation because at the end of the day, they still going to be together. They're still together. Okay. And you still going to let him do what you going to do to him. Okay. Um, When he started crying <laughs> and she said, you better not. You better stop that crying before I fucking kill you. And then wiped his tears. And then when he tried to touch her, no, don't put your motherfucking hands on me. Don't do that. I don't even want to talk to you. I hate you. I hate you, Jody. 
I was sitting here like, what in the world is going on? But I get the emotions behind both of them. Both of them feeling the fucked upness of the whole situation. So the situation, I, I really want to have sympathy and empathy for both of them, but they play a role in the whole thing, okay? So I really can't, but I'm not going to down them like that, you know? Jen, if you want better, you have to get out the situation. And I know sometimes that you love somebody so much that you just can't let them go, but you feel like you can't let them go. But if you want your sanity and your heart to be whole, maybe that's what you need to do. Or you just haven't reached your limit yet, so that's why you're still there. Van, if this is the woman that you want to be with, you say you want to marry, you want to have kids and all that stuff with, why do you continue to fuck up and hurt her like that? You see her like this, and I'm pretty sure this is not the first time that you just seen her going through this and crying and all this stuff over you okay so why do you continue to do that you have to put forth the effort to be a better person yourself okay and Jen you have to know your worth all right moving on from that Junior shows up to the party with Adriana and Lily she's feeling some type of way I forgot to mention last week that Junior is back at Black Ink Crew okay he's back at um Nime. and so you know Lily was like I ain't gonna try to be no bitch you know um it is what it is with what's going on between Junior and Adriana. That whole Jamaica thing happened, and we just going to let bygones be bygones. And I had to give Lily her props on this because, you know, as much as we can't stand Lily most times, she did do the mature thing by going over there to Adriana. And, you know, she could have at least, she also could have not said anything and just let the party go on, you know, without a hitch. But she also just needed to clear the air because everybody's there. And Junior's going to be working at the shop now because that's what Ryan said. And so it's like, obviously, Adriana's going to be at the shop sometimes or whatever. They're going to be running into each other. So let's just bury this hatchet and not have this bad blood going on and, and just go on about our lives and move on. And so that's exactly what she did. She apologized. She said it was no blood. She ain't got no hate for her. She don't have no reason, nothing against her. Um, they both apologized for the whole thing that happened in um, Jamaica and they moved on from, from it. They all took a drink together. It is what it is. Later on, Lily is in her feelings again because she can't get over the fact that she still has feelings for Junior. He hurt her. She fell in love with him. He didn't treat her the way that she felt that she deserved. And, you know, she, how else would you feel, especially when you in that predicament and you see your ex that you still have feelings for and they're in a, giving all this love and attention to somebody else, you know, you're going to feel a type of way. So I understood where she was coming from. And I was just like, Lily, keep it together, bitch. OK, keep that shit the fuck together. And, you know, it was Adriana that came over there to Lily and saw that she was, you know, out just doing her own thing, sulking in the corner, trying to figure out what's going on with her. And they had a grown-up conversation about the fact that, yeah, I still got feelings for him, but I'm not trying to break up your relationship. I'm not trying to do anything like that. Obviously, you're doing something that I'm not doing, and you are actually doing what he needs, okay? You're the one for him and all that stuff. And I was like, bitch, who the fuck is this bitch? She said, this the new Lily. I said, oh, this the new uh, Lily that you was talking about. Okay, we'll see how long this kumbaya shit lasts. But, you know, it is what it is. And so, at this point, the conversation was going good. Then all of a sudden, Lily said, bitch, since we being motherfucking honest and we trying to get on the good foot, let me just go ahead and admit that when y'all first was initially started talking, Junior called, uh, texted me talking about he loved me and all that stuff and how he wished he still was with me. I said, wait a minute, Lily. No, I get it, but no. <laughs> and I was like, oh, please don't start fighting right then and there. I'm thinking Adriana and Lily finna get into it. Girl, no. Girl, no. Adriana said, um, Junior has a habit of fucking lying to her, so therefore, she gets pissed at Junior. And she was like, this girl ain't been lying to me since. She telling me all this stuff, so why she would lie to me and all this stuff? Junior come over there trying to figure out what's going on. Why would you tell her that? I said, I had love for you. I ain't say I was in love with you. I ain't say this and all this stuff. I said, Junior, calm the fuck down. Okay? Junior literally goes from zero to a honey, and sometimes that makes me feel like he guilty, and sometimes that just be a defense mechanism but i just don't know what it is with junior um he was doing the most adriana was doing the most i said y'all would come and fuck up the party first jen and van okay everybody looking at that when jen and van got into it ryan was drinking his drink and he was just like 
these niggas. I said yes. These are the people that you got working for you, okay? You should know already. And then you got Junior going off in the parking lot. And Adriana, he's a fucking liar. He's a fucking liar. Why would she lie? Why would she lie? You always lying to me. Well, I was like, girl, let it the fuck go, okay? Is you gonna, you gonna still be with the man anyway. So, calm that shit down. Get your little acting on for the cameras and all that shit, whatever. Moving on from that, um, back in Chicago, this is when shit started getting real. Back in Chicago, we got Don. He was at a bar, and he was supposed to be meeting up with his father, and he never showed up. Now, the father is going through a whole bunch of stuff, okay? The father lost his daughter, who committed suicide, Don's su uh, sister, who was also dealing with mental health illness uh, illnesses. And he's dealing with depression himself because of all of this. And he not only lost his daughter, he lost his mother, and he lost his brother. All back to back. Baby, I wouldn't have been able to deal. Those are, that's not like a distant cousin or a friend of a friend or something. These are immediate family members. The woman that gave birth to you. The brother that you grew up with. Shared a fucking room with probably, okay? um, The child that you helped bring into this world, okay? Your DNA is in her DNA. Makes up her DNA. That is some shit to deal with i'd be depressed myself okay and so don was you know talking on the phone with ashley about it and he was like because he never showed up if he not gonna show up to me i'm gonna go over there and see what's going on with him and i'm so glad that he did that he went out there and he was being real when he said he's gonna keep in contact with his daddy and make sure everything is okay and he had a real ass conversation with his father his father let him in he was at the house um and, you know, the dad was just talking about how you just feel like a whole bunch of stuff is going on. People don't understand and you feel alone and all this shit. And it was just, it was just, it was just sad to hear, but it needed to be said. And once again, I am applauding the fact that we are getting more scenes like this on TV, on reality television, more real scenes like this, because this is what's going on. The mental health issues, for some reason, has been taboo in our community, and we need to bring that shit to the forefront and make it seem, make it so that it is okay. It is okay, and you're not alone to talk about that shit. And so I applied the fact that he was sitting there being a um, shoulder for his father and looking out for him and saying, maybe you need to regroup, recharge over here at my house so I can keep an eye on you. He was like, yeah, I'll take you up on that. I'll stay there for a week or two, you know, being around the kids, being around the family atmosphere. He just didn't want his daddy to be alone. And I was like, that is really nice of you, Don. That is really nice. Be a good son, okay? Back at Las Vegas, they said, bitch, it was 2.08 in the morning. I said, damn, that's when the party over with? Bitch, what? Put down in the comments. Put down in the comments. In your city, what time do the clubs close? Okay, because I think I went out there to, like, on the East Coast, they close early. On the West Coast, they close early. Don't they close, like, at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning or something like that? Bitch, that's early as fuck out here, bitch. Let me tell you something. The clubs, the, uh, clubs out here don't close till after 4. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 4 or after. 4 o'clock in the morning. Okay? I was like, bitches just rapping at the club at 1 o'clock, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. What, 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 what y'all doing? Okay? Mom, anyway... Put that in the comments. And also, I've been meaning to ask this question. This ain't got nothing to do with the show. But in the way it do, um, Ryan, what is his uh, ethnicity? His nationality, all that shit. You know, break that shit down, okay? Um, If you know it. Because I was like, is he um, is he Creole Filipino or something like that? Is that what the daddy is? Like, somebody is. Because that, that, that hair texture is just... You know, he wavy up in his bitch. He wavy up in his bitch. Okay? I was like, look, Ryan. <laughs> I ain't never looked at you like that. But, bitch, you cute. You cute. All right? I see what the girl see now. Um. Anyway, you know, a bird moment. I just had a bird moment. Not all the way there. It was like slightly. Like, uh, I was like, the hair is doing something for me. Oh. It was all curly. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Anyway, moving on from that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's 2.08 in the morning. And Charmaine had um, knocked on Four's door and was trying to, you know, talk to Four. And you can hear Four crying. 
they had had a previous conversation and he was just saying how he feels alone. He feels alone. And so he went open up the door. Then he finally opens the door and he hugs her and tells her that he loves her. And they was like, I love you too, bro. You know, everything is all good. And so at this point, she want to go get Ryan. They go into the room and they're talking and... Um, he was just saying how, you know, he don't even want to be here. He feel like it'd be better if he wasn't here having these suicidal thoughts and just talking crazy like that. And, or I shouldn't say talking crazy. That's, that's not right. Um, just, just talking out of his, just, just talking, you know, crazy uh, suicidal thoughts. That's what it is. Okay. Not crazy. I don't want to say that cause that could be offensive to somebody. Um, and at this point, um, they was trying to tell him, no, you got so much more to live for and all this shit. And for what we found out when Don was talking about his father, he was also talking about four. And he said that four had a history of depression ever since they was kids. And he was diagnosed with depression. And so he goes through these waves and everything, which happens with depression. If you ever experience it, you know exactly what it is. And so at this point, um... Ryan told Charmaine to get out, okay? And at first, she thought she just said, because she gets up from the chair and moves to the bed. And at first, I thought he said, get up, too. I thought that's what she said he said, too. And she was like, I said, get out. I was like, goddamn, Ryan. And I was like, that little, it's the it's the gruff voice that he was having. His When when he can't hear, I mean, no, not when he can't hear, but when he can't speak and his voice be gone or whatever, and it be all rough and gargly and shit like that. That's what it is. That's what it is. Fuck everything else. That's what it was. Because I was like, wait a minute. This is a sensitive moment. And this is a serious moment. But that did some get out. I was like, you didn't have to talk to her like that. But say it one more time. No, no, no. No, no. Um. So she gets up and, you know, she goes over there and she talks to Van. And um, Van comes in there, you know, telling Van what was going on. But before Van gets in there, baby, that scene between Ryan and um, Four, when they was just hugging, and Four was breaking down, and Ryan was just telling him, you know, you like my kids, you know, and all this stuff. I accept that you, I take responsibility for you, and you my bruh, okay? You always going to be around, I'm always going to be around, I don't want to hear you talking no stuff like that, and all this shit. I mean, oh my, when I say... That scene was the best scene of the whole series, okay? That scene alone, I was sitting in this room, like, I was just like. And I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm literally just having this type of reaction, just like, because, you know, it also plays into the part where they like to, for some reason, we like to portray... Well, they like to portray our people as insensitive and unfeeling, especially our black men and angry and all this stuff and don't know how to, um, you know, show emotions and all that. And to see these two black men just embracing one another and supporting one another and crying on each other and being there and offering all this help and Oh, it just did something to me. It just did something to me. I'm sorry, y'all. It did something to me, bitch. I was in here tears. I ain't even gonna lie. I, 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 I teared the fuck up. I teared the fuck up. This bitch that was up here just like, yo. Y'all did it on that one. Okay? And he was like, Ryan said he, you know, did his, um, been through this before. He's known for for a long time. Longer than probably anybody else in the, um, the house. And so, he knows what he's going through. And Van didn't know it was this as much as it was. You know what I'm saying? And so, <laughs> It was just glad. I was just glad that four had somebody that was just understanding who been through this with him once before and knew how it was to be there to support him in this instance too. Okay, so when Van came in there trying to talk to him and they was all just sitting there with him and then he was just like, "I just want to go to sleep. I just want to go to sleep." Van was like, "Shit, we ain't going nowhere. I sleep at the um, foot of the bed. You want to lay down? Lay down." And see, they was being brothers and all that stuff and. You know, later that day, the next morning, they didn't know where he went. He literally disappeared. 20 minutes go past. 
He ain't getting no contact with him. I do respect the fact and like the fact that Ryan said, I'm not finna go locate this man with these cameras going around. Uh-uh, the cameras gotta stay back. I said that was a real ass shit right there. That was probably one of the realest moments right there, okay? Um, that was the second realest moment, I will say. He said, no cameras, bitch. Um, <clears throat> and so... You know, they call him around. They don't know where he's at. They call um, Don. Don telling them, you know, he gets in his space because he do have depression. And, you know, when you have a, a, a depression or whatever, you don't need nobody telling you what you need to do, what you need to do, what you need to do. You got to, you know, let them come up out of it themselves, okay, because you can't force them to do it. And I was like, look at Don. You know, he's being a, like Don was being Don. <laughs> Time. Y'all remember I used to anyway, moving on from that. But you know, he was speaking that real shit. And so, um, you know, Van tried to FaceTime for couldn't get in contact with him, sent him a message trying to see where he was at. I think they said like forty minutes or so later, uh, he finally got a response from him and he said he was okay, he had a location that he wanted him to meet him at, and um Van said he wasn't going there with the cameras or whatever, so they sent out the Uber and went to the um went to where he was and he sent the message back and called and said to the producers and stuff saying that, you know, he's going to go back home to Atlanta. He's good. He seems a little bit better, um, but he's going to go back home to Atlanta, to his family, to his mother and all that shit to, you know, recharge and, and get himself back together. And I, that was basically the end of the episode because they started leaving. You know, Charmaine did tell Bella and Gina, that you know what was going on not to the depths but that he wasn't coming back and that he had depression and shit like that but um yeah that was a good episode y'all did a really really good job i don't care if somebody said oh bitch that was boring no bitch that was a learning this was a learning lesson and a, a teachable moment and i hope somebody i hope somebody got something from it okay but y'all tell me how y'all felt about this episode and um that's what we need to do. We need to learn how to talk to each other, okay? Quit holding all this shit in. Talk to each other. If something's going on, seek help, okay? And then they did put out there that for, you know, he's taking a leave of absence from the show so that he can get help. And I do love the fact that they was emphasizing that he needs to seek help. So, you know, not suffering in silence and by yourself and just saying, oh, let's just go to church. Oh, let's just lay hands and all that stuff. No, you have to seek further help than that, you know, in conjunction to, you know. So, yeah, that was a good episode. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about it, and I will see you guys later. Peace.